Illuminati, a video essayist, political tuber, and as we'll come to find out, so much more. This is how she built her career and then crushed it. So Blair's career starts in a really weird place, making relatable content for women, actually. And I tried to pick the poop up with my hands. It broke in half in the toilet. So, and then it like slides back down. So now there's poo stains like embedded into the toilet like skid marks. So now Ladies, don't you hate it when you need to take out the poop scissors? Blair had started her scheming pretty early in her YouTube career when she fell into the commentary space. Something Blair would prefer you forgot about actually is her time here. She was a little edgelord, complete with her saying slurs she'd disapprove of, satire and censorship being big topics that she talked about, and Blair got a piece of the action working with a longtime commentary live streamer named Tommy C. It was during this time the character Sarah J. Warren was born, SJW, where Blair would play a satirical riff on the stereotypical SJW, complete with red wig, you know that image that you've seen a million times. It was at this time that Blair established herself within the SFTP community, the community around Tommy. Warren is unapologetically feminist, and if they don't like it, then I would love to drink their overprivileged male tears, okay? Uh, she would hang out with people from Tommy's shows and all seemed right with the world at the time. During this time, there were a lot of people who would get wronged by Blair, Nicholas DiOrio, Tommy C, as well as friends of Blair, including a rotund fellow named Rico. Now, Blair was involved with all this small scheming, and a lot of it is really a footnote in the larger career of the maniacal triangle Illuminati. For example, there's some false striking video allegations that appeared uh, during her time in the commentary sphere. All of this is really small fry stuff, but it's showing the cracks in who she is. And then the cracks really start to show with the quote unquote fat incident. Now, the reason the community of SFTP is important to mention is because Blair had made a lot of friends within it, including that guy Rico that's come up. And I shit you not, this entire fallout actually starts over a fat joke. But who is Rico? Well, uh, Rico is short for Ricochet, and he's a big guy. People would rib him for that, including Blair, despite coming to his aid as much as she, you know, perpetuated the jokes of him being fat. She couldn't handle fat jokes about him. Apparently he's fat. What? <laughs> Oh, uh, really? Well, I mean, that's what they said. I don't know. Apparently, yeah, this is for a vlog, right? I didn't oh, know. is it? Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a camera with a, with a, um, a mic. A I didn't know it was a vlog. Hey, yo, he's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> cut that. Cut comrade, that. Cut that. Yeah, cut that part. Comrade, cut that out. <laughs> don't cut it out. No, comrade. Do not cut that out, comrade. Leave okay. that. <laughs> fucking uh, comedy golden. Uh, you know no, it. No, you. Needless to say, Blair's reaction to all of this is goofy given the evidence at hand, and you can listen to a long version of this story told on the Now Recording podcast. Now Recording. Now Recording was made off the foundation of gay Discord drama. Stuff you'd uh, never hear from, never hear out of the usual commentary channel's mouth. Drama that usually stayed within the text channels of Discord servers, only ever being relayed during VCs while frequent chatters were gossiping about such and such. We decided to take advantage of these stories that never made the public eye. But before us... There was one big gay Discord drama that made its way past the threshold of the usual commentary topic. A Discord drama that involved the entire SFTP news team at the time, as well as a YouTuber that now has over a million subs. But the short version is, is that a teenager calls Rico fat. Rico, a grown man who has made fun of other men for being fat. Anyway, Blair takes Rico's side in the fat debate. The background lore is that at this time, the relationships that Blair had made within commentary were already faltering. A series of events took place, none of which paint Blair as a very good person, but nothing really is huge to note other than it's just Illuminati being Illuminati. Here's a quick TLDR. Uh, well, she jumped the gun on the Slazo allegations. She was worried about mods who were mutual friends with the SFTP people, or she was worried about Discord mods spying. You know, stuff she does, but she is also worried about other people doing to her. So the next big event occurs after a joke is made about Rico again, where Blair resigns from the SFTP news team. Basically, this all culminates in Blair vindictively deleting videos behind Tommy C's back because she had manager status on the channel. 
Needless to say, it got really easy to be uncharitable to Blair because she was deleting videos that were somebody else's. If she was willing to mess with projects that people put out, what else would she be able to do next? What bothers me the most is, is the get to the point stuff. While it was not a successful project, I loved it. And it really bothers me that I'm never going to get to see those videos again in order because not only are they drama news videos, we did skits and stuff in between them and we worked real hard and, you know, I, I bought all the graphics and, 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 and did all that stuff and I'm, they're, they're gone. They're, they're never coming back. Um, I, it, and it sucks. And, um, l let me tell you something right now and I'll prove it later when it comes up. This is uh, yeah, rip, rip Wilson. Uh, they're not all gone, but anything related, related to Blair is gone. And some of those videos had like Rip Wilson and Sarah J. Warren or Blair and, or Crimson Studios, and they're they're all gone. And I made that playlist for me. And I know there's some confusion about whether they're privated or not. Um, yeah, some of them were privated uh, as per Blair's request a couple months ago when she was going to sue Keemstar for saying she had an STD. So I cooperated <laughs> and I privated the videos, but before she left, she deleted the private videos too. So Blair echoing recent events would go behind the scenes. So there was a degree of separation and ask people to do something about videos made about her. Basically stuff like quote, listen, there's a hate video featuring something you did. It could, uh, something, I don't know, be done about this. You don't want your work associated with that kind of hate content, do you? This YouTuber godfather complex would just develop over the course of Illuminati's career. She also, at this time, started accusing people of doing things to her when they didn't, such as her accusing Nicholas DiOrio of making fun of her miscarriage when he had no idea that happened. I would later find out after all of this and talking to Cruel World Happy Mind that Blair would tell this lie to anyone who would listen including Cruel World Happy Mind, Madison. Uh, the story did reach Nick, by the way, so needless to say, Blair told a lot of people about something he didn't do in an effort to discredit him as somebody who would report negatively on Blair. But now we're getting into the YouTuber beef side of things with Blair, and there's a lot. For example, she accused a Reddit YouTuber of subbotting. This YouTuber is known as r slash. Now, personal opinion here, I think she just happened to be correct about the subbotting. Her video on it is genuinely really bad and amounts to one point of data that is not a good video, and basically everything she said can be explained away very easily. I can steal man against her video super easily. The Reddit community. There are a few key players in our community and a bunch of up and coming channels. Every community has problems, and I'm happy to say we don't really have a huge problem in here. Until now. There's a new channel that's popped up and is gaining traction, and I genuinely believe that's awesome. Or should I say, I thought it was awesome, until I started to dig into their stats, and I saw things weren't quite adding up, and now there might be a problem that we need to address. So let's begin. Now, what's happened next is through the grapevine, so take it with a pinch of that sodium. After this video, what's interesting is that allegedly, Blair makes the claim that r slash doxed her and swatted her parents. Now, this is another story Blair told in private to people. She's untrustworthy, so take that for what you will. This is just a story that was said about this YouTuber in confidence in private. The reality is I don't know if it's true and I personally don't know if I believe it. Now, the other YouTuber beef worth mentioning at this time is Cruel World Happy Mind, whom according to the drama at the time, uh, uh, apparently Blair had uh, copied uh, Madison's work. Now, there's this whole story involving the anti-MLM community and this pot stir. Uh, my hot take opinion about Blair, though, she probably did copy uh, Madison's work. Uh, she's not very creative, but hey, I, I don't necessarily know for sure. Anyway, Madison in good faith reached out to Blair only to get the cold shoulder. The basics is that Blair turned around on a podcast and badmouthed her. What I did have happen though recently, which this is, I don't, I'm going to try and keep it vague so I don't mention this person's channel, Yeah, yeah. but uh, it's, a, it's a very small YouTuber and she DM'd me on Instagram claiming that I copied her. She claimed, yeah. that, I, she claimed that I copied her video that she had done Ooh. maybe a couple weeks ago, right? Once again, this accusing of copying, I'm just like, where? And she also said that I asked her to credit me. So she messages me and she goes, I'm just really disappointed because you're someone I look up to and you copied my video and I want credit. Where in this message do I ask her to give me credit? Where in this message do I say I need credit? Where? 
Why is there this completely different narrative than what I feel happened? I don't understand. Uh, this allegedly extended into social posts. Blair accuses Cruel World of subbotting and basically moving the goalposts from the task at hand, making statements about Madison that don't make her look good. But Madison stayed cordial the entire ordeal, regardless of the claims made against her. If this is starting to sound familiar, it's because it's kind of part of that godfather complex that Blair seems to have. I'd hate the theory craft here, but it seems to me like Blair sees competition or somebody that could hurt her position and then uses her platform to try and discredit them. Uh, Nicholas Theorio says bad things about her personal life. Madison may or may not be a sub botter. R slash may or may not be a sub botter and so on and so forth. And that's hurtful. It really hurts. And I can't imagine how many other people she has said this to. If she so quickly said it on a podcast publicly, how many people has she said this to privately? All of this stuff. This creator also said that in one hand, I'm just like a tea channel who just like sips my coffee and talks about my opinion. And then she sits down for a video, uh, maybe 30, 40 minutes long, drinks a coffee, is distracted the whole time, and just gives her opinion on how she feels about things. But then on another hand, they've said that I wanna be just like her and do just what her channel does. She even admitted, well, kind of, that she was restructuring her channel to kind of mock my own channel. So I was like, so you're taking my formula, uh, essentially like you're looking at how I outline my videos, you're trying to replicate that. This and then she funny. deleted the DM after a couple days. Which it's like, I wanna be a tea channel, but also, I want to do exactly what you're doing in your channel. And, you know, again, as we go through this, uh, Madison, to you, I can assure you that Blair talked shit about you 100%. The way she discredits Madison in the clips provided really does echo the click. Madison even mentions how what happened is different than the narrative she is spinning, which is almost word for word what the click said. I also find it really rich that Blair brings up source usage when there is a long documented history of Blair not writing anything of her own and just trusting employees to do their job which has also led to Blair being accused of copying other people. I know this is an old beef, but if I heard about it at the time, I definitely would have defended Madison. You know, anyway, I think Blair's a slimy bitch and you should support me on Patreon. Um, anyway, uh, if you do, you get a discount code for my coffee because I sell coffee. <laughs> anyway, because I am somebody who likes to do my job, I reached out to Madison and she hasn't spoken on it, but she did give me permission to share our email exchange. So let's go over what happened after this video. There were theories as to why Cruel World Happy Mind took the videos down, so I wanted answers. I've heard whispers that Blair is litigation pilled, so I had to ask if that's what happened to Madison. Madison was very professional and super kind and quote, said to me, though I never recorded the call and it was two years ago, so I really can't verify much other than my personal account of things, those theories are inaccurate. I was newly pregnant at the time my interactions with Blair took place, extremely sick from the pregnancy, so that was a huge motivator to reach a solution with Blair so that I wouldn't have to have the stress of the drama slash beef making my condition worse. I forgot who offered to first do a private call. I believe Blair went on a tweeting rampage of sorts after my initial video calling her out and was saying things I interpreted as angry things in the heat of the moment about someone she didn't really know. So I thought it would be better solved if we spoke on the phone since often time tonality can get lost in tweets or messages, etc. Madison goes on to say, quote, we spoke on the phone for two hours or so. To be fair, overall, it was a good call, where Blair wasn't screaming at me or calling me names. Though, she went into a lot of information that wasn't really necessary on the call, and I'm not sure why. She told me about the history she had with other content creators who tried to quote-unquote ruin her career, according to her. She said she had six other businesses apart from her main channel, told me sensitive information about her own health and past health scares, etc. At times, it felt like she was trying to, quote, mentor me on the call. At times, it felt like she wanted to sympathize with her. And at times, she had made some vague, threatening statements. I remember her specifically telling me that she knew my general location of where I lived based off of my Instagram post, saying things like she would advise me to take those Instagram posts down, and also that 
because a random site wrote an article about me that this site is basically a pays for views site or something like that. That it could look like I pay for my audience and that I should send the site a legal warning to get them to take it down. Basically, she would give me advice that had a threatening tone to it. I concluded during the call that it seemed that Blair has a tendency on to fixate on a very few specific people in the commentary world and feel a lot of hate and vitriol towards those people, especially if she felt they wronged her. As she kept mentioning a few commentary creators' names on the call, telling me not to speak with them and keep my distance with them, etc., I decided during my pregnancy I wanted to steer clear of her and her world, so I decided to come to an agreement with her during the call to stop the drama and any and all interaction I had with her on good terms as quick as possible. So. On the call, she said in order to move on, she would want what I said about her to be cut from the video and for her and me to both post statements on her channel about a reconciliation. I did that and eventually unlisted the entire drama video altogether because I started to feel bad about the amount of attention it was getting. I didn't want my video to be a sole reason someone hates another creator. At that point, I still wanted to believe that Blair was going to grow as a person and I was hoping my forgiveness would help her learn to let it go and forgive others as well. Now, unfortunately, it seems Blair has not changed. The entire situation was very stressful at the time since I was really in a poor condition and extremely sick from my pregnancy it made me take a step back and not want to reach out to other creators on YouTube as much since I was afraid of a similar type of drama that would start or they would try and talk behind my back, etc. I think toxic people like Blair create a competitive cutthroat environment in the commentary space on YouTube when it doesn't need to be like that. I've talked with people like Sloan, Smokey Glow, Mooncat who have been nothing but extremely nice and supportive and I hope one day the entire commentary community can be like that. I don't know, maybe we can all stop putting up the toxic creators in this space who cultivate a negative environment. I also think the issue of copying is sort of a bizarre issue for commentary creators. When I first started out making videos, I was so sensitive that my videos were being copied and looking back, I wasn't looking at things the right way because everyone has a right to take some inspiration from other content. As long as someone isn't copying the content word for word or cites their sources, I think it's all part of the commentary life cycle. If creators start policing who's copying what, it could go down a strange road that limits creators' ability to be creative and draw inspiration from others. I think societally we all know when copying goes too far. Someone says something word for word, makes an identical thumbnail, etc. But in the grand scheme of things, general inspiration from others doesn't actually harm another content creator's brand content and identity. So I think focusing on it will only tarnish the commentary landscape. Of course, I should also note that this most recent fallout with Blair is incredibly ironic to me since my interactions with her started when I was a very small creator who believed at the time that she stole a lot of work that I put into a particular video. The sources she used for hers were practically identical to the sources I used in my video. She said phrases that felt similar to what I said. It all felt a little fishy to me at times. I had less than 20k subscribers. I was a little more paranoid about that stuff. I tried to reach out to her privately about it, but instead of responding, she went on a podcast and publicly talked shit about how stupid it was that I thought she copied me. It's a little funny, I guess, the hypocritical nature of it all. Maybe karma does exist, end quote. Now, after this, I had to ask for confirmation of who these commentary channels were. I wanted a link back to the beginning of this story that happened in the SFTP Discord server. All this small drama that had boiled over into a years-long vendetta against YouTubers. And so the two channels I offered up were Tommy C and Nicholas as possible candidates. And yeah, I was right. <laughs> Apparently, Madison had been asked to speak on it a couple times from fans, but she self-admittedly is very busy in tossing around the idea of telling her story. But I figured that this might help signal boost her story in a sea of stories that have been coming out about Blair. I figured for her sake, I'd just say what she said and hopefully it can be a good enough reference for her. It was a lot to read word for word, so hopefully I didn't mess up too many times on the teleprompter. <laughs> it's, uh, it's late if we haven't noticed, so, you know. But the cruel world happy mind stuff isn't even the first bit of Blair annoying the anti-MLM community. It turns out that she generated a lot of animosity amongst the activists that do a lot of the work in that place, in that community. Especially since she herself would say that she didn't know this community existed, which to me sounds more like plausible deniability BS. I recently learned apparently as there is this whole uh, 
anti-MLM community, mm -hmm. right? I kind of thought I was on my own little island doing mm -hmm. my own. So after that, some activists from the community came forward to speak about Blair. And this involves a certain MLM type thing that's going on, uh, Black Oxygen Organics, and a movement called Boo is Woo. Woo being a slang for pseudoscience. Basically, a writer of Blair's tried to get involved with the activist group going against Black Oxygen Organics. And there was a Facebook post about this whole time. And it said, quote, Blair lied about not knowing the movement even existed. It didn't sit right with me or my admin team that she wanted to make a monetized video off of our hard work. The work of informants, the work of those actually involved in activism, the work of the anti-MLM movement groups who work tirelessly collecting and reporting information on Boo. Ultimately, I decided not to add this writer to the group. They were declined and then requested to join again. One of the less active admins who hadn't seen the discussion on why we didn't want them in the group let them in. The writer was in for less than two hours when I realized and kicked them out of the group. The writer then emailed me where I explicitly state that I do not consent to the group being used for Blair's video. Blair still made the video and to this day my group is listed as the second source directly after Boo's own website. It's very clear from the video's content that much of the information is taken directly from Boo is Woo. Information in the group included personal stories, legal information, and insider information that could be put at legal risk. Uh, privacy and permission were very important. When her video came out, multiple admins and friends were aware of the situation and were upset and decided to call Blair out in her video comments. All of the comments were deleted. No action or rectification was taken. No discussion was had. Everyone was just silenced. Blair made a second video on Boo based on these public articles. She used my images, my words, and my name, which she pronounced wrong. It's said like Kira, not Sira, in the video, and never spoke to me about it. There are public articles, and I understand anyone can make a video on it, but after her using my private group as the main source for her first video, despite my non-consent, and despite her being out, for using information she didn't have permission to use. It just felt like another punch to the gut, someone using me and my activism work and the activism work of my friends for monetized content without her consent under the guise of feigned appreciation. To me and the admins involved in the situation and considering what she had done even prior to this, it made it clear to us the type of person Blair was. She was using to use other people's work without her permission for her own gain. She was willing to lie and distort the truth. She lists the group but does not credit the individual's sources. One could even argue she was a plagiarizer. She didn't care about other people's feelings, their work, their time, their energy, or their consent. End quote. The anti-MLM community, both Cruel World Happy Mind and the Boo is Woo community are just a small footnote in the massive list of people wronged by Blair that continue to build up over the course of her career. Instead of being straightforward and honest with people, she chooses to go around and go behind the scenes. She causes problems wherever she is, and her cronies also seem to go along with this. It's not hard to ask for consent or to conceal the identity of a source. During this whole story, I've spoken in private confidence with those close to the events, people who work or worked with Blair. People speak in hushed tones for a reason. Mods, former staffers, friends, mutuals all have their reasons. Blair doesn't seem to respect this relationship between source and journalists. In my eyes, it does bring up, mm, definitely, to one of the bigger events in Blair's life. One that you probably saw coming, the sad milk escapades. This literally all starts like the domino meme, if you've ever seen that, where it's like a tiny domino and then it's a gigantic domino at the end because that's what's going on here. So how did we get to the sad milk exposés? Well, <sighs> It starts with Legal Eagle, who has barely anything to do with this anymore. So she accuses a Legal Eagle editor and by proxy Legal Eagle of doing some weird reach around to try and steal a stylistic motif for an edit. You know, really simple stuff like a torn paper and highlighted text effect. Stuff I've used before, everybody's used before. Anyway, this gets ratioed because, well, it's stupid. You know, it's, it's very stupid. But you know what's not stupid? Me, the sponsor of this video. I, I run a coffee company with my brother and we, we everything's fair trade, organic, biodegradable packaging. 
Uh, I'd like to take that to be our like big thing. So like, please order if you can. Use D10 at checkout for 10% off your order. Anyway, Blair's getting absolutely reamed on Twitter for all of this. The outrage is ridiculous. And then the sad milk stuff breaks. So it'll be retreading ground if you followed this drama, right? But there's also a B plot going on where H Bomber guy addresses plagiarism with Blair. Now Blair explained this in her video as like a clerical error, but given the stuff with Crew World Happy Mind and the anti-MLM community earlier, excuse me if I'm going to be uncharitable and say maybe she just was really looking for a cop out there. Another funny like CD plot is the master debater Lance of the Surfs. Uh, he defended her on like all of this the same day that he like went on the Timcast or around the same time. And then the click video came out and Lance is just, you know, some of us try to stack wins in our career, Vance. But you know, it's nice that somebody looks for the common man and decides to stack all the L's for us. So these Twitter threads from the Sad Milk Men get made about Blair. And Blair produces a video titled Illuminati Exposed. And at the time, this worked for some people, but even before that, other people were starting to see the cracks in her video, uh, other YouTubers specifically. The community was starting to split at the seams. For example, the Illuminati subreddit is purging critical takes. Comments are being moderated on YouTube, and allegedly there's a concerted effort to control the narrative. Now, that's alleged, but the subreddit definitely went down. <laughs> Illuminati apologizes through gritted teeth to Legal Eagle in public. Some felt that Blair was being persecuted for being a good person who puts herself out there for other people. Some said her anxiety is to blame. Needless to say, it's not a good look for Blair. Uh, Blair argued on Discord, by the way, that the hate mob that is being rallied against her is being controlled by men who hate her because she is a woman. The points worth mentioning in Blair's video are discussed well in the clicks video, but we'll be going back and forth and Wonder gets his own section, but I'll mention where needed. So first of all, one of the things that Blair accuses against Click is him being uh, someone who uses slurs. And by proxy, the bigger argument here is that he is a bigot type person. Click brings up how, as he puts it, a very convenient series of videos resurfaced with him saying some not so savory things after he left Sad Milk. His old videos, as he puts it, aged like milk. Those videos are not any of the reasons as to why we split ways in Sad Milk as Click tries to insinuate. Even back in 2020, I had stated that those videos had nothing to do with the ending of Sad Milk. I was actually unaware of those videos at the time of our friendship, but had I been aware of them, that friendship would have likely ended sooner. Now, Blair has multiple sock accounts to run defense against the Click, and one of those accounts is known as Doobie Schmertz. The clip Blair provides has a 2012 clip of the Click saying the N-word. Not to anyone or being used in a derogatory way, mind you. I don't want to play semantics games, but I will say there are more recent examples of Blair saying slurs in Discord than to click. I mean, 2019, hmm, that's, uh, that's much more recent. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, let me play another clip of Blair saying that this was never in her vocabulary. I'm a level with y'all here reading through the things and seeing this person in the chat excusing click saying the R slur because it was 10 years ago and it's irrelevant as super yikes to me. Again, I'm the same age as click and that word wasn't even in my vocabulary, not 10 years ago, not now, because it was never appropriate. Well, this is not gone how you want it to and it very much shows Blair. So uh, the rest of these clips are also incredibly ancient, but have been produced to make the click look bad. So the F slur portion of this clip is directed at an inanimate object in Black Ops 1. Uh, the last is regarding the R slur, which uh, some people tell me I can say, others say I can't. So I'm going to be really honest and say why I don't say slurs is because I like money. At least I'm honest. <laughs> Anyway, the last clip is regarding Minecraft. Start off by killing off some of these retarded zombies. And I see that there's a... I love how Doobie Schmertz makes this weird comparative statement between people with autism and zombies. Like this statement is clearly not saying that, but it's presented as such. Like when you link the two Blair, do, do you not realize what you're saying? Anyway, uh, Doobie Schmertz has a backup called Doobie Ubi, uh, which is just a backup to boost the other account. 
And uh, another account, which went private recently, but is loaded with subtweets, and uh, it's called Sad Rhombus. And yes, I got to it through a follower on Blair's page, uh, a mod of hers, or at least formerly a mod. But Sad Rhombus now is private, so whoopsie Blair, whoopsie indeed. Anyway, she's been tweeting about all of these people who left her even recently, so I can only imagine that she actually drinks her own Kool-Aid and is uh, bought into the narrative she tells herself about these people. Okay, the next point brought up against the click is that he harbored an environment for nonces, which is a slang term for kitty diddlers. Anyway, this is a bunk statement off the bat, considering the click mentions that his Discord is huge, and as we all know, Discord just has a problem with nonces. It, they just exist on the platform. That's That, that, that happens. Server alone has 44,000 members and almost 3,000 bands. It is a well-known fact that Discord has real problems when it comes to exploitative individuals and communities using their platform. We as creators do our best to clean this up as well as the platform teams. Neither I nor my team condone this sort of exploitative behavior and do our best to address it when it comes to attention. This isn't a clicks Discord issue, it's a Discord issue. Click also gives a detailed timeline of how Blair is incorrect. Blair says how the click didn't take action when the click was asleep. You cannot do things while asleep, believe it or not. See, in the DMs, she mentions how Click knows about this situation, but if the Blair is the one in Sad Milk who does all the milkman scheduling, then she would know that the Click would be AFK at this time. She went behind his back to initiate this lie, and knowing Blair's position at Sad Milk just lends credence to the Click's timeline. She would have been aware of his schedule, since she does so much for the group channel. She would have known when he's asleep and when he's awake. Ever since she made us some announcements, some fans are putting it together. While I am mostly the big bad bish, some are figuring it out. Listen, I have click on videos saying the F-slur and R-slur. He will put himself up with his own ego like I won't have to do anything of that. He's gonna muddy his own hands and unravel it himself. Oh yeah, it's in his old videos. They are still live on his channel. An ironic statement from the maniacal triangle. <laughs> Something I've learned as I've gone through Blair's history is that a majority of what she theorizes or accuses of other people she herself does or is doing or had done in the past. The TLDR for Click is that he provides receipts for every single thing that's brought up against him and shows with beyond reasonable levels of evidence that, in my opinion, Blair attempted to defame him. She went out of her way, above and beyond, paid staff to help build a narrative around a Click to overall label him as a bigot who harbors sex pests in a Discord server. The Click provides proof and then backs up his claims with even more proof. He ends up being vindicated, but yet again Again, here we are seeing another YouTuber having to reveal personal details so that way they can be protected from ridiculous claims. Now, this is beyond strike three on Blair's <laughs> card. Uh, by now, it's three YouTubers that she's tried to defame, at the very least, basically try to ruin their credibility or more, but the story needs a magnum opus, a piece of information that touches on all the themes from earlier. A scheming, vague threats, defamatory behavior. It needs all of that. And that's where we enter Wonderstruck Guy. Wonder was one of the other milkmen who had a personal emotional uh, video about Illuminati. There is a lot out there, but a moment that stuck to many viewers is when Blair mentioned a time in Wonder's life when he thought about ending it all. What I specifically would like to highlight is that he insinuates that he had intention to and was taking action to arm himself to end his life. In a message directly with me, he explicitly told me that, quote, I was legit trying to get into my dad's gun cabinet to fucking kill myself. Either way, out of concern, I called the Austin Police Department non-emergency line to ask for a wellness check. And when I explained to the operator what was the situation at hand, they immediately transferred me to the 911 dispatcher. I then read the messages to them, and I gave the 911 operator the last known place of his residence in Texas, which was his dad's house, to perform a wellness check. The operator then told me not to arrange anything unless the police force is present. In his messages, Wonder states that he received a call from his therapist, which ultimately pulled him out of his intended plan. And let's take a moment to discuss the therapist. It was brought up without much good reason. In my opinion, it was an attempt to shut down the credibility of Wonder as an individual, as somebody who was erratic emotionally. Wonder's video retreads a lot of the same beats we mentioned earlier, so I'll try and be brief. Blair allegedly spoke ill of Wonder behind the scenes, much like Cruel World, Nick DiOrio, and The Click. Blair, it appears, cultivated a walk on eggshells environment. Blair, in a bid for control as some weird serial entrepreneur, wanted all of her employees in sad milk to 
live in a cul-de-sac, as she describes it. Let me elaborate on that one. If you didn't know, Blair wanted to get into real estate by building new homes and renting it out to the sad milk folks. This is really weird. This is such a high-risk way to get into real estate. Generally, you buy houses, flip it, or rent it, but not build new houses on empty land. Speaking of businesses, Blair talks about sad milk employees like contractors and employees with the language of employees. And I've done contract work forever. Generally, you don't get benefits, a topic we'll get into more in a little bit. Like, were the milkmen employees or contractors? I did a YouTube stream and over a hundred people couldn't really understand what was going on or what she meant by this. I run a business and pay a contractor, but let's get back to Wonder. So Wonder's accused of being a bad worker. Blair's evidence for this is that he's basically emotionally erratic, doesn't do the work on time. The reality, according to Oz Media, another Sad Milk member, is that he did not have any work. Uh, you all know me as uh, Oz, Oz Media. Now, during the month of June, I stayed with you, Oz, and Blair. During this time, did Blair provide work to me as an editor? If this wasn't a case, did you ever witness me personally trying to assist Blair in anything else? Like, yeah. I mean I mean, you weren't provided work for like like a majority of the time that you're actually employed I think we were also working on like Thinkology at the time but like I literally came out of that besides a couple of recordings and you ended up not really wanting to pursue that so there wasn't like any work that she had actually given you part of the company you were kind of just literally being paid to like stand around I might be wrong on this but you actively did try to like assist her with her like uh, the candle shop that she was just starting up and I mean, she didn't like that, but you were actively She's trying to seek out shot. and find work. So it's not like you were just like freeloading <laughs> off of it. You, from, from my memory, you were trying to actually earn your keep. Wonder paints a picture that is that when there was work, it was sparse. The back end of the business appears to me as a business owner, as mismanaged, as Wonder needed to hop on a plane to finish an edit. The words business dysfunction come to mind. In a very mild defense of Blair, since uh, I could only parse it out as much as I possibly could. The pay structure just seems very confusing. Uh, that is when it comes up in Wonder's video. My stream and I deduce maybe he was used to doing the paycheck to paycheck thing, so the salaried with benefits taking a cut kind of suck. Uh, usually it does for most young people. They usually say things like, why do I need a 401k? I'm not retiring anytime soon. Uh, a point worth mentioning is the LSA that was featured in both Wonder and Blair's video. Now, Again, this is just me editorializing here, but this system seems needlessly complicated and designed to cut expenses on the employer's behalf personally, as now employees need to submit receipts to receive reimbursement. If you don't use the full amount, you lose it, and what's allowed in the LSA seems to be decided by the employer, but it's very difficult to understand how this works. It really is. It at most just seems to cause a lot of fluff clerical work for the payroll, in my opinion, which it seems that Illuminati is the one who does it. The main takeaway many people got from Wonder's video though, and one you should be taking away from it, is that she tried the character assassinate the guy IMO. The forum comment was a nothing burger. It was an ass-eating joke that for some reason was apparently grounds for termination in a YouTube business. I mean, it's not a Fortune 500 Slack with like general chat. I <laughs> it's really weird that that was something that they thought about firing him for. Another weird thing worth mentioning is how Blair, according to Wonder, on top of all of this other stuff, owns multiple BMWs. Listen, I know it's really small and very stupid, but I do find it very funny that the video essayist who's gotten into politics with like bread tubers and stuff is like a multi BMW owning landlord. <laughs> Never saw the paperwork on the car. I never did any of the work to obtain the car. The most I did was go into a call with Oz and Blair where I got to choose seat colors. I had no idea of the process or what I was really genuinely getting myself into, which I don't see how I, you could argue that I did. I was 20, 21 at the time. I can't think of a single 20, 21 year old that I know that has gone out and filed paperwork for a 50 to $60,000 car. I did not know what I was doing. However, Blair would oftentimes tell me that she herself had enough money to retire at any given moment. Now, she was a very successful businesswoman, and from the surface, that did seem true. Blair even had a few BMWs of her own, as well as Oz at the time, so I trusted my friends who seemed to have it all, and I trusted the process, which, again, I found out was a very bad mistake. I mean, look at how ba bad the optics are here with Wonder. If things were reversed, it would be like a 30-somethings man buying a 19-year-old girl a new BMW, a new home, all of these things with promises of success if you work for me. I mean, that sounds like national news. That sounds like 
an issue. Uh, say well, uh, say whatever you want about Wonder, but this guy was taken for a ride. <laughs> now, this video is an hour and 20 minutes, and I've definitely missed some of the things in it. Uh, the video mentions alleged vaguely threatening statements, uh, which backs up rumors I've heard about Blair being allegedly lawsuit happy. It's everything we've seen and then some up until this point. Wonder got put through the ringer, even those who haven't come out with stories were put through the ringer. I know because I've talked in confidence to people. So where's Blair now? Well, that video was definitely a Hail Mary from her. She knew the walls were closing in and things haven't gotten better for her. Hard to say who was the nail in the coffin, but if it wasn't Click, it was definitely Wonder. Uh, things are, are really bad trending for her right now. If you look at her statistics and if you have the YouTube dislike extension, her videos are being disliked to hell and this is being echoed in the comments section which are just absolutely annihilating her. Uh, if Blair had any credibility left, it's been expended, it's gone. I wouldn't even be surprised if behind the scenes she had some people who walked from the job. It's just a shame that it wasn't caught anytime sooner and she wasn't hung out to dry. She needed to develop an entire list of people behind her that she ruined or tried to defame or spread false information about. Anyway, Creepshow Art's one of the other ones who's come up a lot in this discussion and I don't think Blair is going to pack up shop anytime soon. If she's hated, She's too proud to leave even if she's hated. Expect her to be a hanger on. Even if she gets no views, she'll milk all those residuals until the well runs dry. I mean, honestly, she doesn't edit or write her own stuff anyway. She could stop voicing the videos and become something else. Another funny anecdote, and this is just an opinionated guess, I think she did her exposed video on her phone. <laughs> now, I've watched her exposed video a lot of times, and I think some people picture at you know, like it was done in one take. It was not. I, I really don't think it was. Uh, those tears that were worked up, she worked them up. It just looked like it was edited in Kindmaster or something, so that's just my guess for why I was on a phone. Anyway, I expect her to shuffle about and still make a career out of this, right? If she has friends, I don't know who the hell would want to risk being around her, but somebody will. Anyway, I've left a whole playlist down below that covers the entire Illuminati drama that we did on stream. So if you want more detailed breakdowns of anything, you can find it down there. Uh, buy my coffee, whatever you can afford if you can. And if you like this coverage, you should check out my Mizkif video, a disgraced streamer and OTK co-founder who's gotten away with it. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell.